but he, we've been working together for about two years, um, Arnal and I, and Kirk and I just think the world of him. He's definitely someone who knows me well enough to push me out of my comfort zone and to call me on my BS when I'm trying to kind of walk away from, you know, fear of failure and, and stuff like that. And um, we've been able to form a really good relationship just over the past two years. And I think the world of him, you know, anything that he tells me, I immediately apply it. Like Miracle Morning came from him, guys. Um, that whole chess scenario about, you know, if you move your piece and your coach doesn't move their piece, the game's over. It came from him. You know, everything that he tells me, I am apply, apply it immediately. And because of him, I was able to achieve 15 star with you guys, you know, so it really is, um, he really is someone that you want to listen to what he's saying because he knows what he's talking about. He's worked with a lot of leaders. So I want you guys to make sure that you have a pen and paper in hand and are ready to hear all of the greatness that he's going to share with us before he has to head off to leadership or the new leadership conference. I'm in awe that you would even take time to do this. So thank you so much. And I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, well, it's good seeing, you, seeing all of you guys. We are getting ready for the New Leader Conference, and so I know that uh, quite a few of you will be at leadership in uh, October for the first time, but this New Leader Conference we're really, really excited about, and I hope that uh, many of you get to be here next year. So it's only the second time we've done this New Leader Conference, so we've learned a lot from last year, and uh, We've gone from about 125 last year to over 400 this year. And I think we'll easily pass six, 700 by next year, if not 1,000. So lots of fun stuff happening here. Now, I was telling Meg that I would love to talk to the team. First of all, it's a team that I love talking to just because of, you know, I feel like I know you guys. You know, you've been here. We've hung out in Chicago and various different events. And so what I wanted to do today is really I've got – two things, okay? I'm not going to go into technical, tactical things. I'm going to be talking more about kind of mental things and more talking about facing your fears. And I'm going to talk about <clears throat> facing my, my own fears and the various things that I've done to kind of push myself outside of my comfort zone. Because I know that if we want different results, we have to do something different. It's either two things. One, you do something completely different or you think differently. And typically, you don't act differently until you start thinking differently. So you've got to start thinking differently before you act differently, then you'll get different results, right? So pretty, you know, pretty easy, quite frankly. But the toughest part is actually the even pushing, put, pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and saying, I'm going to do it, right? So I want to tell you guys uh, another experience that happened to me. You guys have heard the marathon story. You've heard the mountain climbing story. I'm, o I'm always, I'm always going to push outside of my comfort zone just so I can illustrate that with another story. Okay, so I'm working on what I'm going to do this year already. But in December of 2015, we did a offsite. So it was a network offsite where all the execs and everybody from the network part of the company went off to you know, an offsite and just kind of talked about, you know, how was 2015? What did we learn? Where did we come up short? What are some lessons that we can take into 2016 to help improve the coach network and the customer experience and, you know, the whole coach network as a whole. And it was organized by Michael Neiman. And Michael Neiman basically was choosing where we were going to have the, the offsite which was the first problem, okay? If Michael Neiman is choosing something, you never know what you're going to get. Truly, you never know what you're going to get. Like the people backstage at Summit, are always, they're, I, I, don't know if, I don't know how they have even any hair remaining because just, you just never know what Michael is going to come up with. But that's part of his brilliance, right? Part of his brilliance is you don't know what you're going to get and he's always going to push you outside of his comfort zone. Okay, so the place that he decided to pick for us was is a place in Culver City, about 20 minutes from the home office in California, and it's called the Actors Gang Theater. The Actors Gang Theater. Okay, so the moment I heard theater, my heart just dropped because I knew I'd started thinking, okay, this guy, why is he taking us to a theater? I know we're not going to go there just watching a movie. I know he's going to want us to do some crazy stuff because if you guys don't know, Michael is actually in a former life uh, was an actor. 
like, you know, he did acting in movies and commercials and different things like that. So <laughs> the moment he sends the email out, like everybody's heart just drops and everybody's starting to figure out of some kind of an emergency, emergency that's going to happen that day. Because we know we're going to go over all the graphs and see blah, 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 see what we did and mastermind and do all that. But then there's going to be an activity. Okay. So I went into the website. Um, I found out that uh, Tim Robbins from the movie Shawshank Redemption. Some of you know the movie Shawshank Redemption. He was in there with uh, Morgan Freeman. He created it. He started it back in, you know, about 30 years ago. And they put on, you know, shows, um, you know, every, every week. I think it's a nonprofit. You know, so for those of you that like, you know, plays and all that stuff, definitely a place to go if you're ever in, uh, in the L.A. area. But what I saw in there was also that they put on these workshops. Right? In the workshops, it's kind of like you're sitting there with, a, you know, with, a, with an actor and the actor is, is, you know, the actor, he or she is teaching you how to act, right? And, you know, and I'm going, okay, I can live with that. I mean, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. I do that all the time. I can do that. Only problem is this. We get there, Michael, Jeff, Carl, they talk. We all talk, presentations. And then these actors, these professional actors show up. And what, what is called the maître, the, really for, for the English translation is the master. Uh, this lady that's done it for 30 years shows up and she starts telling us about the history of the place and she tells us, you know, how acting works and how we're supposed to show emotions and that, you, you know, you don't show emotions by just what you're saying, it's how you're saying it, right? So how many of you have heard that it's not the words you say, it's how you say them? You've heard that all the time, right? And and even over the phone, if I'm talking to Meg or any of you over the phone, you can kind of tell what kind of day I'm having, right? Right off the bat, based on my tone. And so the point, the point of this whole exercise, as Michael joins the metro, this lady that is like, you know, she's speaking with authority, and that's already, we're already scared, and we're really scared now, right? And, and, and basically, Michael's point was, was to do two things. He said, one, you're going to live what coaches go through every day, which is you're going to be way outside of your comfort zone, right? That's number one. That's the point of this exercise. The second point of the exercise is to show your emotions in a safe environment. Many times when we're sitting here and I'm looking at you and Manny, you're, you know, you've got this look and you're, you're thinking, you know, and you're smiling now, right? That's kind of an acceptable emotion to show, Jamie, right? You, sh you share that. Now, for those of you, um, for those of you that were there, I think it was when you came here in Utah, Meg, and you, and you came here and we sat in that conference room, some of you showed a little more emotional range than you would otherwise on a Zoom call or whatever, because it was a safe environment right? It was a safe environment where you can really show your true colors. And so what Michael's second point was, we want to see some emotion, okay? And there are four emotions that we were supposed to display. Fear, anger, sadness, and then happiness. Happiness, we've got that mastered. <laughs> we work with coaches. It's like, you know, it's like, you guys are always happy. Every time I show up to an event, it's like, oh, you guys are, you guys are the happy fit people. You're back in town. We love you guys. Right. The other three emotions were not as comfortable showing, you know, in, in a, in a public setting with people that, you know, we don't know as well. And so remembering my mind, I thought workshop, I'm going to sit in some like one-on-one -on -one in a small office and they're going to teach me how to act. Okay, the only problem was after Michael and the Met um, explained to us what we're supposed to do, these actors came on stage and they started acting. And literally they were in full on costume and makeup and they're, do, they're, like, they're acting and they're showing like anger and sadness and crying. And, and I'm exhausted just looking at them. And I've, now at this point, my heart is just beating out of my chest, right? Because I'm going... Okay, if I add one plus two, that means, that means we're going to be up there. We're going to be up there. There is no way we're going to be up there, right? 
every single one of us start fidgeting around. This is the time that I'm hoping that Meg calls me and says she has some emergency with some coach, something happening, and I'm out of there, right? And so I'm like, and the more we stay, the more it's very apparent that we're going to go up there. Okay, so after that, after they, they act, and these are people that are phenomenal, right? These, they're so good showing us the range of emotions and all that. We get told that it's now time to pick a character. Okay, you have to pick a character. A character that you just learned about right then and there, right? It goes from, you know, the, um, and this is, this is back in like ancient times in Italy. And you're supposed to act like the grandma that knows every single little secret of the small village. Or you're supposed to act like the Don Julio, the debonair guy that just woos every single, you know, person, woman that comes into, you know, into contact with him. To, um, to the servant with the hunchback servant, right? Like all these crazy characters that you never run into in real life, right? So they tell us that. And then they tell us, go dress up. You need to pick the character and go dress up. So we go into this costume room and we're getting dressed and all that stuff. And at that point, I had to make a, a, I had to make a choice. I could pick like a fairly easy character, kind of like the young guy. I could have picked that character, like the young guy, whatever, cool guy. You know, I could have picked that character, but I said this. And this, this was key. And this is something that you guys have to think about. This is the beginning of the year. You're looking at, you know, the next 12 months and going, I could be safe. I could be safe. I could go for, you know, I'm a one star. I'm going to go for two star or I'm a three star. I want to be a five star. Or I could say, I'm going to go all in. What do I have to lose? I've made it this far. What do I have to lose? And I made a conscious decision. Call me crazy, but I made a conscious decision to pick someone that I really will be extremely uncomfortable with. I, I, I it would challenge me would push me to grow and, and would completely put me outside of my comfort zone, right? And I did not know how I was going to do it. All I knew was I could look at some of what these other people have done and I will just try to emulate them. Let me stop there. What I'm talking about here as it relates to you, okay, is where you are right now, you could be safe or you could be risky. I can tell you right now, Safe really is the new risky. By being safe, you're not really using every single, one, every single ounce of your potential, right? By being safe, and you can quote, quote me on this, safe is the new risky. Ask anybody that has a job and, and is hoping to retire, you know, after 40 years of working. Okay. Look at the past, you know, 2000, 2008 to now, look at the past seven years. Some of them are your, you know, family members. Safe is the new risky. Think about anybody that just relies on their, in the, on their job and doesn't have, you know, uh, a beach body business, right? Think about maybe someone, because I've talked to quite a few coaches that had full-time jobs, unfortunately got let go or laid off and beach body became their primary bread and butter. If they didn't have beach body, they would be on assistance right now, right? So think about that, right? Safe is the new risky, right? And the last part is, even if you're comfortable, why not use every single ounce of your potential, right? Some of you have your kids with you, right? Every time I ran a marathon and I climbed the mountain or in this part I went and acted, I kept looking at Olivia and I said, I'm going to tell Olivia that I use every single ounce of my potential. I used every single ounce of my potential. And I see a lot of you, Liz, you know, Bridget with kids, all of you have kids. You can look at your kids or you can look at someone that is near and dear to your heart and say, I've done the best that I can, right? So that's where I went in. Okay, so here's who I chose. I chose this guy, this guy by the name of Papa Pena, okay? Papa Pena is this guy that is kind of this earthy, um, you know, he's kind of like a shaman, like, you know, he's got the lotions and potions, you know, he's like part, you know, you know, 
like he's kind of scary, but he's got this mystique about him that people want to know about him a little bit more. Um, you know, he's not grounded. He's very, you know, fidgety. You know, he just, he moves all the time. This was the description that I was reading. Then I had to interpret that. I had to interpret that. Not only wearing the costume, but also, but also putting on the makeup and all that stuff. Have any of you watched uh, a movie, and I don't know, I'm dating myself, The Gods Must Be Crazy? Anybody? Anybody heard of that? Okay, maybe one or two, right? Okay, so the next part I'm going to share, okay? Please use grace, okay? Uh, <laughs> please be nice. I, I put myself out there, okay? The only difference is I wasn't an actor. I was putting myself out there in front of people that I'm going to see on Monday. Okay, it was Friday. On Monday, I was going to see them. These, this wasn't just people that paid to come see me, and probably nobody would pay to see this, but I put myself out there. So what I'm going to share is my interpretation of Papa Pena, an earthy guy, all about lotions and potions, fidgety, kind of scary, but nice, likable, and just all over the place. All right? You're about to see a hot mess. So I'm going to share my screen, and... We're gonna play this video, so let me share screen. All right, you guys can see this. All right, let me minimize all this stuff. Uh, here it goes. Can you hear okay? Can you hear anything? Okay. Can you hear now? All right. sweating just going through that time again that it was intense <laughs> was it intense or what and you're going wow that's is that's Arno yeah that, that was me completely nuts completely outside of my comfort zone but 
the nice thing, there's two things that happened after that. One, I was completely exhausted. I was completely exhausted. Um, you know that when you have pushed outside of your comfort zone and you've pushed for a goal like crazy, if you're not exhausted, you have more in the tank. You have more in the tank. If you're not exhausting, you have more in the tank, right? That's one. And um, number two, after that, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was so done. Like, I was like so exhausted. You know when you do like power hour after power hour and you're talking to people all the time or you're going to summit, you just want to go in your room and just sit there and not talk to anybody, right? I'm just, it, and, and now I understood kind of what actors go through. You know, I, you know, I had this view of, oh, you're just acting. It's like easy. It is hard. <laughs> it is incredibly, incredibly hard. Okay. So here's my challenge to you. There's a takeaway to all this. Okay. Don't, don't go acting. You know, you're a beach body coach. You can use your talents and skills, you know, through changing a lot of people's lives. And that's what you can do. Um, I want you to be very clear on the vision that you have this year. I want you to be very clear on what it's going to take. Okay. But the place where it's going to start is understanding the lay of the land, right? And I'm going to share my screen again. I want to show something to you guys, kind of showing, kind of looking at, um, you know, this year and what the year uh, looks like. Because you've got to treat it like a business. And part of treating it like a business is being very intentional on how you spend your year, okay? I'm going to share a screen again. I'm going to show you kind of this, this deal here, okay? Do you guys see that? Thumbs up if you do. Okay. So this is kind of like, you know, what the year looks like, okay? We all know if we look at here, kind of like January through about here, January through April, we know that, quote unquote, it's a fairly easy time in the business, if you will. There's quite a few people that want to know about losing weight and, you know, and, and getting fit and making an extra income, right? So if you look around this whole year, these kind of circles around it, these are kind of your levers, okay? Your levers that will help you propulse you forward, right? So you've got Super Saturday that, 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 that is there because this is an event-driven business. You've got Super Saturday. You've got the New Leader Conference for those of you that either, either have coaches there, upline coaches there, or, you know, uh, across-line coaches there. Then we've got Super Saturday that will help carry us into Coach Summit. Then another Super Saturday. Then the Leadership Retreat. Then Super Saturday. In between all this, right, right, all these months are promotions, right, that we do every single month. There is new launches, hardcore that you're going to see here. You're going to definitely see some launches here I can't talk about. You're going to see some other launches over here that I also can't talk about. But I can tell you for sure that you need to use those and be very intentional about how you plan your year. But I can tell you also the two things that will make the biggest, biggest difference for you guys will be one, will be one, running like a bat out of hell the first three, four months, right? Because you understand, you truly do understand that that momentum, because it's a business of energy and momentum, like that momentum that you establish in the first three or four months will push you into April super, you know, and, and, and June and summit into the end of the year. That's one. But two, you can only do that if you have really big goals and you have really scary goals and you do that which you are uncomfortable doing. Like we know about the power hour, but there's a part of the power hour that you're uncomfortable doing, right? I just got off of, a, of another Zoom call and we asked on the Zoom call, what, what, how are you doing? And everybody said, good. We're doing well, okay? Going back to the emotions, they were showing just this much of their real emotion, right? Because as we talked, one of them said, to tell you the truth, I am scared. I am scared. And I said, what are you scared of? What are you scared of? And she said, I've so far talked to everybody but my family about beach body coaching. And I finally, I finally shared it with my family. And right before this call, my mom just signed up as a coach. Okay. Because, because I did something that is scary. When you do something that is scary, you do, you get different results. Right. And then another coach, another coach, um, she was scared because she's been going through stuff. 
and she now needs to show her before picture, who's, I mean, everybody should be scared. I mean, I'm scared of that, right? She needed to share her before picture. This is someone that was fit to now that needs to get back on, on kind of the fitness, you know, on the fitness uh, train. And she needed to be vulnerable and share that. What is it for you? What is it that you're scared of? What is that one thing that you know you need to do that you haven't done that you know will make all the difference? I challenge you on this call to share that. I challenge you on this call to have a vision that scares you. Like if your vision doesn't scare you, it should completely scare you, right? Leading up to what I just did there, okay, my palms were sweaty, my heart was beating out of my chest, but I'm telling you, once I got into it, it was almost like I wasn't myself anymore. Like I just lost myself in it. Like I just lost myself in it, right? So, so as you go in, you've got to have amnesia about everything else that's around you and just focus in, right? I mean, Meg has to do that now that she's got Tenley. She's like in those two hours or the hour, she's like all in, right? It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality of what you do and the heart that you bring and the passion and the vision that you bring to this. But I challenge you to make 2016 your year. I know it will be your year. I love this team. I just love the people that's in it. Um, really feels like a family to me. I look forward to seeing a lot of you, um, you know, around the region and, uh, and at Summit and celebrating a lot of you. But Meg, if I were to just, you know, I'm going to toss it back to you is let's go through and look at the things that we're scared of. What are we scared of and what can not we do different in 2016? So take it from me. Sometimes it's, it's never, quite, quite frankly, it's not sometimes. It's never comfortable. Like if, if you want to be comfortable, this is not the place for you. This is not going to be comfortable, but I know, I know for sure it's going to be worth it. So Mac, thank you for having me again. Uh, let's make 2016 a phenomenal year. And, uh, you know, I'll stay on if they have any questions or maybe some of the people can share some of the scary things that they want to, that they want to confront this year. I'll let you call on them. Yeah, absolutely, guys. I totally, you know, and I know, like you said, it's uncomfortable to be able to share things that you're terrified of. Um, but I want to hear from you guys. So just kind of unmute yourself and, and say it out loud, something that you're scared of, but you are going to overcome this year. Don't be shy. I'll go first because I'm calling myself out on this. Um, and this is totally kind of embarrassing and scary, but I still have a fear of inviting people to coaching. And here I am, right? I have an amazing team because I fear, will I be able to paint the vision for them clear enough? And I'm afraid that if they fail, it'll be me, you know? So I'm still afraid of that. And that's something that I've limited myself with how many coaches I've asked in the last year. And I'm like, if I just asked more people, how many more lives would be changed? So it sounds silly as a coach that has been doing this, that that's a scare a fear of mine, but, but that's what I want to conquer this year is ask, you know, 10 people a week, not three. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that, man. And it shows that if you're scared, then yeah, there's quite a few others that are scared of probably the same and uh, never goes away, but you've been able to do some great things and, you know, and, and uh, build an elite team. So congrats for wanting to push more. Thank you. Absolutely. I think for every coach inviting, like none of us say that's the fun part, you know, but the outcome is the fun part when you get to be on a zoom yeah. with your team, because you did present the business to them and they were able to have something positive come out of it, you know? So just remember that, like when you are scared to invite, just think, okay, I'm building my dream team. So in order to build that team, I have to reach out to these people. Okay. All right. Who else wants to share? I'll Maybe. share. Ooh. Sorry, I don't know who else is coming. Either one, either one. Go ahead. Um, so my scary goal, and I've only shared this with a few because I'm afraid to do it because I haven't done it myself, is to get 16 of my coaches to two-star, and that means inviting. And I've been scared to death to do it because I haven't done it myself. You know, we're making ends meet, but I don't have this crazy successful business, and it's scary as hell to – yeah, paint that vision of this is what you can do because other people have done it and you should join my team, but I haven't done it. So I'm committed to doing it and I've been inviting more, but that is my goal. And Arnold, I'm trying to send you my picture for extra motivation. All right. Love it. Excellent. 
That's a big goal. Yeah. And, and you know what, that's going to stretch you like crazy. So thank you for sharing that Leanne Kelly. So I kind of going off of Manny's as well is the inviting part. And I've had the conversation with Laura Lee that it's a gift that we have. So if you, you know, it's changed my life. It's changed my husband's life. He's working out now. He's sleeping better. He's feeling like my son was like, dad seems so much happier. Not that he wasn't happier before, but he's laughing and that kind of thing. So I just got to remember that it's a gift and it's changed my life and to present it in that sort of way. And then also my before and afters. It's hard, mama four, but that's my goal this year. I'm waiting for a better after, but it's a struggle, right? And then if you share your struggle, then people relate with you more versus, hey, this is what I was and now I got six packs, a six pack abs, you know? So I gotta work, work it up, but that's my uh, scary goals. I love it. I love it. And usually, you know, with the fear of inviting guys, before you sit down to work, I want you to think like, where would I be if I didn't have Beachbody in my life? You know, that kind of helps you get into that mindset. Cause it's like, I know if I didn't have Beachbody in my life, I would be back at work. I wouldn't be able to sit on the Zoom with all of you guys and have Tenley right there and, you know, everything like that and Kirk to be able to be home, you know. So make sure that you remember that when you're about to invite someone because you could change their life, you know, for the better. All right, let's hear two more and then, then we'll be done. Yeah. I'm terrified. Um, I... I'm terrified to leave my job because I haven't hit the financial goals that I've set like year after year. And it's hard to go year after year after year and not hit them. And it's my crutch that holds me back, you know, but I need to do it for myself and to just prove to myself that I can do it. God, you're making me cry. Wow. It's been really emotional this year, <laughs> but I feel like I finally have the passion and like, like, I hate my job so much, and I just changed jobs, and I hate it just as much as I hated my job before. And so it's kind of like, I feel like God's just telling you, like, this is not where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be coaching. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm yes. really ready to do it. I want to say something to you, because when I quit my job, I was in the same boat. I hated my job, and I wasn't near financially where I needed to be. And for me, I don't know if this helps you, but like, I jumped off the branch believing that my wings would flap. And if I had to flap and fall and crash, I would flap them. Because I said, if I don't take a chance now, I'm going to do it. So I promise you, if you hate it more, if it takes away from you, it will force you to succeed at this because it's going to drive you that much further. So hopefully that helps. But that was me. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. I love you guys. I love you, love you. Okay, one more. I'll go. Yay, Courtney. Hey, Courtney. So, uh, first of all, I was, oh, wait, I'm on the phone because I couldn't hear it earlier. Sorry. Um, okay, so I was terrified to even talk. <laughs> so there's one thing. Um, recently, I, uh, I know, Meg, you know this, but recently I was able to, gosh, Sam, you're going to make me cry too. Um, I was able to leave my job that I hated <laughs> and my, um, my marriage was kind of like not suffering but we just weren't spending time together and we got so used to doing our own thing and we just got married in June like that's not how it's supposed to be and um as a newlywed or, you know, ever, but, um, God has really stuck with us, um, through this whole thing. And so for most of you who don't know, that's driving me crazy. Um, for most of you who don't know, I started back in January of 2015 and then I quit in April to plan my wedding. And then, um, I just, this is kind of funny. I started missing Meg. Like I talked to her all the time and I was like, I want more of Meg in my life. I need to talk to her again. And so um, I was able to reconnect with her. And then I started coaching again in October. And so, yeah, I'm just kind of scared to, the only thing I'm doing now is everything Beachbody. I work from home and I do everything Beachbody. And so to think that, that's kind of really cool because 
I get to work on myself and I get to work on um, my marriage and really build God in the middle. And um, I, you know, what I'm really scared of um, to kind of redirect back to what your question was is I'm terrified to let people know what I'm doing because I, I don't really care what people think of me anymore. I've kind of grown out of that, but at the same time, you know, we all struggle with that. So in the back of my mind, I kind of do care. So I really get scared of um, introducing the opportunity to people and telling them that I'm working on myself and showing them that I've gained 50 pounds and whatever. So that's what I'm scared of. And I'm scared of pushing myself to my limit to where, um, where I get burnt out because it's something that I love so much. So that's what I'm scared of. Sorry to cry. <laughs> I love you guys. And hey, Arnal, we're not just happy coaches. <laughs> we have we have our feelings and the fact that you guys feel comfortable enough to share that. Like I'm like crying over here, man. But that's a huge step. That's a huge step. Now portray those emotions on your page. You know, the more open and vulnerable and real, and you guys have heard this, but the more that you can be that on your page, you're going to attract so many more people. You're going to feel so much better, and you're going to be putting uh, everything that Arnold just talked about, like every single emotion into your page, so you're giving it your all. You know, you're not just painting this perfect picture of a coach, but you're sharing everything. And Courtney, do you know how many people who are newlyweds that could relate to that because a full-time job is pulling them away from being able to be with their spouse? You know, there's going to be so many people and you're going to be in awe. It's like, how did I, I think Raina had talked about it. You know, how do I connect with people on a different topic and then it pulls into Beachbody? Well, Beachbody is helping you get reconnected with your husband, you know? So that's how you're overcoming that. So I love it. Arnold, anything you want to say? No, I would just say, guys, um, you know, going back to, you know, safe is the new risky. And, um, you know, let's just display all the emotions and, you know, dream big and, and work hard. And, you know, life will never be the same. And so thank you for having me. We definitely have seen a wide range of emotions on this call. And I absolutely love it. I think it really shows the humanity in people. And I just feel even more connected, <laughs> believe it or not with this team and every single one of you and understand that um, we, we take that responsibility uh, hugely of just cre having created and growing something that makes such a difference in so many people's lives. But thank you for your courage. Thank you for your, the attitude that you have and uh, for all the work that we're going to do this year. So we're right there alongside with you and, uh, I guess uh, we will see you on Facebook or at Summit or NLC or Leadership. So thanks for having me, Meg. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Appreciate you. Guys, don't hop off quite yet. Um, I want you to do, we're going to do some action steps in the Important Team for Addicted group after this. I just want you to share with the team what you're scared of, okay? Maybe you didn't have the, enough courage or time to hop on and say it on the Zoom. So I want you to post it in the team group underneath my post. I'll put a post in there. And then the second thing is one to two things that just really hit home um, about what Arnold talked about. Okay. Thank you so much for giving both of us some of your time on this Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. Arnold, thank you so much. You have a crazy busy schedule and I cannot believe like you just touched everyone. I saw everyone tearing up um, and in awe of your acting skills. I'm very impressed. I didn't know that about you. Like I was like, whoa, he's like an, he's an actor. Like that's I'll keep, I'll keep cool. my day job. No, I'll keep, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, it was so good. So good. Well, All guys, right. have a wonderful Wednesday. Arnold, give yeah. Christy Coaster and Abby and uh, Brittany Wright a hug for me, and All I'll right. talk to you guys later. Bye. Sure.